usually when you go through your entrepreneurial journey, uh, I know I'm supposed to say welcome back, but I'm ready to talk about this topic. Uh, the the biggest question that comes up, or actually it don't come up because people think it's only one way to be a business owner, is you have to create the revenue all yourself. You know, that's going to buy a business, going to buy a building, start with some uh, austere name that nobody's ever heard of to sell products or whatever. Uh, but there is another side of the table, and that's buying somebody else's business. Uh, so today, we're going to talk about the two differences and which one is the best avenue to take. And as Alex said it previously, in short, it's, it's easier to buy revenue than to create revenue. So what he's saying is it's easier to buy a business and make that business better than to start a business from scratch. So... With all that being said, Alex, what you got on it? Yeah, this is definitely one that I would agree with because to create revenue, you have to have an idea or to create a business, you have to have a business idea and you're starting essentially from scratch. So you have to come up with how, you know, what kind of product you're going to sell or what business you know you're gonna create and so there's a lot of thought process that has to go into it before you even take action and then you got to take action and then there's a lot of you know steps along the way there's hardships and all this stuff when you've built up enough capital to just go ahead and just buy an already active business or an active asset that's already producing money it's a lot easier to do it that way because you could have came up with the capital however you came up with the capital. It could have been gifted to you. It could have been money you've saved from work. It could have been money that you you know, got from the lottery, whatever. But if you know where to put that capital, then that's the only hardship I would say that uh, you're facing up front is, you know, what is a good investment in determining what is that investment that you should be buying. But to create revenue or to create a business initially you've got to know a lot of things up front and you have to put in a lot of work with that said um most people think that you know yeah the purpose of being an entrepreneur is coming up with the the flashy name the flashy llc um you know you want to create everything from what screws go into the wall to how your name is displayed on the marquee but like something you said, I think it's easier to, let's just, just follow me here. I think it's easier to create it because usually if you're starting from scratch, you have to cash flow the whole thing. Meaning, I mean, what I mean by cash flow the whole thing, I don't care where the heck the hell you got the money from. It could have been your mom and them. It could have been from work. It could have been from wherever. It could have been from investments. But you have to cash flow the whole thing when you're going from clean slate to the big project. But... If you're, and you can do it uh, many different ways if you're buying a business that's already in existence. Um, you could finance it through, you know, SBA loan. You could pay for it cash because the seller might not be looking for much because if you do it, multiples of profit instead of cash flow. So that's another way to acquire it. You could sell or finance it. You could do some kind of financial engineering where the owner of the business gets the percentage of the profits, but they don't have to be associated with the business no more until they pay back the full amount that you agreed upon for the business. So it's different ways that you can finance it or finagle it and cheaper when you're acquiring somebody else's business that they already have. Especially with the boomers today that's retiring about six or seven thousand dollars. I mean, six to seven, six to seven thousand boomers per day retiring. The business they have is probably already paid off, and so it's you can get real fancy with the deals buying somebody else's businesses. And, and the thing is, you buying somebody else's business and improving it over time. When you start with a clean slate, nobody knows you. You're putting hundreds I mean, in most places in the United States. You know, if you want a brick and mortar storefront joint, you put in hundreds of thousands of dollars to build it out to make it look like something. That's before you get one penny in revenue. One penny in revenue. 
if you acquire a business, a small business or whatever, that's already producing revenue and then you slowly change it into your image, at least you already have revenue to come in and finance the change. Instead of start from scratch, advertise from scratch, zero clientele from scratch, everything else, that puts more stress on you. I know everybody say they want new, cute, pretty, I want to do it my way. But doing it your way usually sucks and it usually fail. And that's a real reason why most of small businesses fail within the first three years because most people, most uh, potential or, or expiring entrepreneurs, what they want to do is they want to have their thumbprint on everything from how the sidewalk looks all the way to how the back room looks. Instead of having your thumbprint and changing um, changing something that somebody already have and then moving it to your image, and they usually fail because of lack of capital. The cost to acquire customers is a is a huge cost. So those are you know different nuances for me with you know buying a business that's already running and creating a business from scratch. And Alex, you do it all the time. Um, you don't go to the contractor and say, hey, go build me a house. You say, hey, give me this, give me this cash flow asset that's already generating revenue. I'll make it better. That's, and you can scale bigger that way. But when you go to a contractor and say, hey, I need, you know, I want you to build it. It's going, you're going to pay more money up front for it. Yeah. And it, and it lowers your avenues of how you want to do it. But Alex, sorry, I went on a tangent. I was ready for this. Now, this is one that I learned from you. I mean, a lot of people, I think, believe that creating a business is the way that you have to go. But there's already so many established businesses and created businesses that really, if you have the capital, all you need to be looking for is one that needs your capital or one that has an owner that's looking to get out of the the business looking to sell and so you as the investor really you just need to look for those distressed situations where you can take advantage of a business or an asset that is not performing as it should be but you can get it to that spot where you need it to be running basically that uh performance level and the only thing that would require getting to that performance level level is a bit of capital which you have and so if you're able to do it then um, I think that's the best route to take is just deploying the capital and then making it run from there. But creating it, it's not impossible, but I think it's a lot more difficult than most think. Yeah, I mean, doing it both ways. I've tried to start a business from scratch. It's very, 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 very capital intensive. I've also, I mean, when I mean capital intensive, everything is on you to start. You got to pay for advertising. You starting off with zero clients, so you got to pay to acquire for client acquisition, client acquisition. You have to pay for build out a website. You have to pay, and this is all money coming out of your pocket from from the beginning. So you have to build it all out to be pretty, and then hope somebody comes. But with a business already established, because I've done it with business already established, they're already you're buying it, you know, on a multiple of revenues or multiple of profits. You know, usually if the smaller the business or the linear the operation is, meaning the linear, meaning if the owner has to do the day-to-day operations, the lower the multiple. I mean, it's business out here to sell one, one time sales and one time profit. But the thing is, is they already have clients. They might not be as profitable, but it's in the, it's in that wheelhouse, that space that you're in. You can be in the boutique space. You can be in the hairdressing space. You can be in sales or whatever. But the thing that they already have is they already have sales coming in. They already have revenue coming in. Only thing you have to do, and and Alex, you said that it's capital intensive. A lot of these businesses, they're just trying to get out of the lease because they can't they can't afford the lease and afford their lifestyle. A lot of these businesses you can walk up to and say, hey, how about we work out a deal? Let's say I, I got maybe $5,000 total when I come to you and, and you're tired, you want to retire or whatever, but you want some money from this, but you want to get out of deal. Be like, all right, hey, let me run it. You don't have to do nothing. You can sit at home. And then for the first, let's say two or three years, you get 100% of the profit, or let's just say you come up with a number of you know $50,000. And then you get 100% of the profits till we pay you back. 
You know, me as a as an entrepreneur going this route, I might have to go pick up another side hustle or whatever to to do it. But the thing is, I'm spending the rest of my time well, working a nine to five job, but I'm spending most of my time not deploying capital that I don't have, but I'm deploying ideas that I already do have. You're using the revenue that's coming in. Again, you're only paying them profit. You're not paying them revenue. So you're using the revenue that's coming in to improve the different aspects of the business that you have in your likeness and image. You can change everything. And then so once you grow the revenue, grow the revenue, grow the revenue, and then they start kicking off higher profits, you pay the business owner back faster. I mean, you could do the same thing in real estate. You can do seller financing deals where it costs you less capital. And let's say you run out of options with banks or whatever. You can do, you can, it's different, it's different avenues you can do subject to. It's a lot of ways you can maneuver with stuff that's already established and instead of doing it brand new. And it's more, as you say, capital intensive when you're going brand new than if you're acquiring something that's already generating you revenue, already generating you uh, ways and means to do things. And you can always improve processes. You can improve the uh, the cost structure. You can improve, you know, where the outgoes coming in. You can enhance client and uh, the client rev. Uh, I said revelations, but <laughs> client relationships. You can do all that stuff to increase the product. But it's way more of going from zero clients to 10 clients and already having clients and then approving it to a thousand clients. With that being said, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to leave a comment, share, and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.